You may have noticed more DC police officers stationed and consistently canvassing some neighborhoods, watching for anything out of the ordinary. These officers are targeting some of the district's high crime areas. It's part of what's known as Operation Thrive. We can't tell out all of our plans. DC Police Chief Pamela Smith quietly launched this new beat at the beginning of the year. We typically would have called that our summer crime initiative. Mm. I thought it was really important that we don't wait until the summertime to address crime. We got word of Operation Thrive in February when officers shot and injured a man in Anacostia. Investigators say officers in this unit tried to stop the suspect, but he pointed a gun at police. And it's unfortunate that someone assumes that it is okay to shoot at our officers. For the first quarter of the year, violent and property crimes are down in the district, from homicides to car thefts. This all follows 2023, D.C.'s deadliest year in more than two decades. So how do you reach out to the people who are they're, they're still hearing the gunshots in their neighborhoods, they're still being robbed, maybe their car was stolen? How do you make that person... I'll say this, and, I, and I, I, I don't mean anything by this, but you know, crime happens, right? It, it's going to happen, and we have to be we have to be intentional about making sure that we have the right officers and our and our resources in the right place to ensure that we can continue to drive down crime, right? Do you feel safe? safe? Um, yes, I do. I do feel safe. Chief Smith adds her public safety efforts are moving in the right direction after D.C. leaders passed emergency crime legislation last summer and secured D.C. back in March. That massive crime fighting bill giving her officers more support. Some of those legislations and laws that were in place that we felt and believe went too far to the left. Mm. We, they're being right sized now. One major change Chief Smith notes is clarity around the use of neck restraints by officers. And I stand on the fact that we there is a ban on chokeholds. Mm -hmm. But to have incidental contacts and officers being charged with serious use of force really put our officers in a very critical situation when they were in the in the context of trying to gain compliance of a suspect or a subject. D.C. police officers have also been making more arrests for various crimes. According to city data, for the first two months of 2024, you can see the big difference compared to years prior. More of those facing charges are also being held in jail all because of legislation making it easier for judges to detain suspects. The population at the D.C. jail has increased yes. uh, significantly yes. uh, as we've correlated that with this legislation. The number of people being held at D.C. Department of Correction facilities is at its highest since March of 2020, before the pandemic lockdown. Individuals who have um, uh, used some type of weapon, whether it's a knife, whether it's a gun, um, and tra have, they've traumatized folks. And, and if we have the opportunity to um, uh, arrest those individuals um, and remove them from their community with the hope, with the hope of rehabilitation, yeah. uh, we will continue to do that. The chief notes this isn't about making arrests. Her team is assessing crime trends every day so they can move critical resources to communities in need. There is the criminal aspect of it that's taking place, but people need services, right? right. Our, our people need mental health services. They need uh, behavioral health services. And I think having all of us together in that same space, being able to provide the service for our community is going to be helpful in the long run. All right, so as we saw last week, crime involving children is another issue the chief is trying to tackle. Chief Smith and the mayor introduced legislation called the Uplift Act last week. This would ban diversion programs for teens charged with violent crimes and also limit those plea deals.